can you lose up to 12% your body weight just by taking a Raise New supplement? Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing a Raise very popular supplement known as MB1 or Metabolic Burn. This product promises to help you burn more calories at rest, lose up to 12% your body weight, increase your energy levels, and also help with a lot of other things like your blood sugar levels, your cravings, and even your gut health. But will it actually do this or is this just another supplement with a lot of empty promises? I'm gonna let you know in today's video by doing a huge deep dive into their many, many claims. I'll also review the research behind their ingredients and whether the product is worth buying. It is a deep dive, but it's really important that we actually address all of the claims that they're making to make sure if it's actually worth buying. But first, hi, my name is Katie. I'm a registered dietitian and certified personal trainer. My goal this channel is to help you learn more about nutrition, fitness, and wellness so that you can be your best, whatever that looks like. I also love to do product reviews, so if you have any products or supplements that you want me to review, just let me know in the comments below. All right, let's get started. What is Array's metabolic burn? I have reviewed Array before in my video on Array de Bloat, so you can learn more about the company there. But simply, Array is a very popular supplement company that aims to have have natural ingredients and address a lot of issues that are common for people, especially in women. They recently came out with their MB1 product, also known as Metabolic Burn. They say that MB1 is a revolutionary product that's going to help with boosting metabolism, increasing energy levels, and curbing cravings. And they say that their product tackles the root cause of metabolic dysfunction. And this allows you to achieve optimal health and maintain it. They say that their product is for everyone, which I find really interesting because this product is intended as a weight loss supplement, but yet they say it's for everyone. They say that if your BMI or body mass index is over 25, then the product is really good for helping with weight and fat loss. But if your BMI is below 25, then somehow the product is really only good for curbing cravings and burning a few extra calories. Ultimately, they say the product is right for you. If you experience fatigue on a regular basis, you gain weight easily or have a hard time losing it, you have high blood pressure or cholesterol, you have food cravings and low energy, and you want to improve your exercise performance. So really it seems like they're trying to tackle a lot of different things in one pill. So let's see if that's actually the case. So let's review Metabolic Burn's ingredients. So if we look at their ingredients, we see that there are quite a few that we need to go over. The first one is vitamin B6. And they say that they use vitamin B6 in their product to help with protein metabolism, water retention, and curbing cravings. First things first, I find a lot of companies add B vitamins to their products to help with metabolism. In reality, B vitamins are very important in our metabolism, but we use B vitamins from the food we eat. We don't necessarily need to take a supplement to somehow improve our metabolism. They also say that taking B6 is going to help with water retention by supporting aldosterone production. In a nutshell, aldosterone is a hormone that plays a key role in water balance, also known as fluid balance. And it does this by keeping water levels, sodium levels, and potassium levels all balanced. Now, I don't really love this claim because I think it is overgeneralized. Of course, B6 and a lot of other vitamins and minerals are important for the functioning of organ systems throughout our entire body. For aldosterone, production, this is produced by our adrenal cortex, which is the outer part of our adrenal glands that sit on top of our kidneys. And there really isn't any solid research out there that supplementing with B6 is going to improve aldosterone production. And even then, vitamin B6 deficiency is not very common, and most people can get it through their diet. On top of this, this supplement has 294% the daily value. Now, I'm not really concerned about this, and it's not linked to toxicity, but the only thing I want to point out here is just by adding extra of a vitamin that doesn't mean it's all of a sudden going to work better for your body. Finally, it says that it's going to help improve neurotransmitter production, especially of feel-good hormones. Usually when we're talking about these feel-good hormones, we're talking about things like dopamine, serotonin, etc. And yes, vitamin B6 is involved in their production. Again though, if you're getting enough B6 through your diet, there's no real evidence that suggests taking extra B6 through a supplement is going to somehow increase the production of these feel-good hormones to even higher levels. For an average healthy person, as long as you're getting enough nutrients in your diet, your body does a good job of producing these hormones among others very well. So here's the thing again, just because something is involved in the body, that doesn't mean taking a supplement is going to all of a sudden ramp up its production even more. So really what you should do is focus on eating a mostly nutritious diet to cover your bases. And then if you somehow were deficient, which 
your healthcare provider would tell you, then you could supplement with it. But ultimately, I don't think taking B6 in this product is going to actually achieve what they're saying it's going to, especially in healthy individuals. Next, we have chromium pickle in it, which I've talked about a lot on this channel. Ultimately, chromium pickle in it is just a really bioavailable form of chromium. Bioavailable just means how well it is absorbed and utilized in the body. And chromium, like many things, is involved in a lot of different functions, but particularly it plays a key role in heart health, blood pressure, blood sugar levels, and supporting our metabolism. And Array really emphasizes taking chromium pickle in it for blood sugar regulation. So when we look at a meta-analysis from 2022, they found that chromium pickle in it supplementation did lead to improvements in our average three-month blood glucose levels, so blood sugar levels, which is known as our hemoglobin A1C. So basically our blood sugar levels on average over the course of three months. However, they found that it didn't really have any effect on circulating blood sugar levels or fasting blood sugar levels. So really at this time, there's no evidence that taking a chromium supplement is going to improve your blood sugar levels, especially on a day-to-day -day basis. In terms of cravings, which they also claim that chromium pickle in it can do, there were two studies in people with binge eating disorder that did seem to find that taking chromium pickle in it did help to curb their cravings and help regulate their blood sugar levels a little bit better. But we really need to see studies in the average healthy individuals because this is people with binge eating disorder who have unique circumstances. So we can't even directly say that chromium pickle in it is going to curb cravings for the average person. The thing about cravings is that it's not really that simple and cravings are caused by so many different things. And for Array to say that cravings are based on our blood sugar levels isn't entirely accurate. If you do tend to eat a diet that's really high in simple sugars, then what ends up happening is you eat these simple sugars, they're digested really quickly, and you get a very up-down effect in your blood sugar. So this can cause you to feel really hungry shortly after a meal. So in this case, the best thing you can do is try to reduce your consumption of simple sugars and really focus on complex carbohydrates that take a lot longer to digest and will have a much slower increase in your blood sugar levels so you're not feeling hungry so quickly after a meal. Another tip is to make sure that you're pairing these foods with a protein source because this also helps to slow down that blood sugar response. Beyond that, cravings can be caused from so many other things. For example, simply craving a food because you deprive it so much. Also for psychological reasons. For example, if you're searching for comfort foods or you tend to cope by eating different foods. Also, you might crave a food just because you saw a commercial or you randomly thought of it. Sometimes people do crave things because they can be potentially deficient in a specific nutrient. And there are so many other reasons why people have cravings. To simply take chromium pickle in it in order to solve your cravings is a very oversimplified look at food cravings. That said, I don't think chromium pickle in it is completely unnecessary in the product. It could still help a little bit with insulin sensitivity, so how sensitive our cells are to insulin to allow blood sugar into them. And I don't think the dose that they use is unreasonable. In the meta-analysis that I talked about previously, the doses range from around 42 micrograms to 1,000 micrograms. This product has 500 microgram, so it's within that dose range. Next, we have my favorite thing ever. Actually, if you've ever watched my videos, you know it's my least favorite thing. We have a proprietary blend. Now, I say this a lot, but the reason why I don't like proprietary blends is because what they do is they just list all the ingredients that they have and provide one total dose. The problem with this is that we don't know how much of each individual ingredient is in the product. And so from a clinical perspective, we don't know if it's at a dose that's going to be clinically significant, meaning that it actually has an effect on health outcomes. Now within this proprietary blend, we have a few ingredients. We have green tea extract, African mango seed, sis's leaf extract, and grains of paradise. For green tea extract, they say that it's supposed to help with natural energy levels and improving focus due to their natural caffeine content. And yes, green tea naturally does have caffeine, but the product doesn't label its caffeine content. So I would really assume that there actually is no caffeine in the product, or at least in a very, very, very small amount because regulations require caffeine to be presented on the label. So this claim doesn't actually make sense if you're saying it's because of the caffeine, yet there's no caffeine in the product. They also say that green tea acts as a prebiotic for acromansia levels. So first of all, acromansia is a type of bacteria that may help with appetite regulation. The issue with this is that it has yet to be definitively proven and there aren't a lot of human studies on it. In terms of green tea promoting its growth, we actually don't have a ton of research on it at this time and we're in the very early stages. Some studies in mice 
studies have found that green tea extract does help with acromansia growth, so producing more of these bacteria in the gut. But as usual, we can't really say that that's going to happen in humans. Humans and mice are not exactly the same thing, as you may know, so we can't really extrapolate the findings to humans at this time. And then on top of that, we don't have really much data to suggest that if our acromansia levels increase from green tea, it's going to regulate our appetite. So this is a very premature statement that they're making at this time. Like we talked about before, your appetite is affected by a lot of different things. If you're exercising or moving a lot, then yeah, you're going to have an increased appetite to compensate for all of the calories you're burning. If you're craving something, then you may be hungry in the sense that you're wanting to have something hedonically or for pleasure. If you're sleep deprived, then your body will push out different hormones. It will increase the production of ghrelin, which is our hunger hormone, and suppress leptin, which is our fullness hormone, to compensate for the fact that you didn't sleep enough and you don't have enough energy. So it's trying to get energy through calories. And there are so many other things that affect our appetite and why we want food. So to simply say that taking a supplement is going to magically address all of the reasons why you're hungry or you have an increased appetite is again, a very oversimplified viewpoint of it. And really, I would argue that trying to take a supplement to address your cravings or your appetite is a band-aid solution to a larger problem. So really what you need to do is you need to find out the root cause of why you're so hungry all the time and why you have so many cravings. So what you need to do is take a look at your lifestyle and ask yourself a couple different questions. So some questions you should ask yourself are, are you sleeping enough? Are you eating a balanced diet of protein, fats, and carbs? Are you eating too many simple carbs? Are you burning a lot of calories but aren't fueling your body enough? Are you going long periods of time without eating so your blood sugar is low and therefore you're actually starving? Are you craving foods because you're depriving yourself? Or are you craving foods because they're readily available and you see them all the time? So by asking yourself these questions, you can start to address the root cause of the issue and not just try to take a random supplement to solve it because it likely won't. Then we have African mango seed and they say that this is a natural ingredient that helps with a ton of different things. They say that it supports fat loss, lower cholesterol and LDL cholesterol levels and regulate blood sugar levels. Now African mango seed contains a compound known as ellagic acid and researchers believe that this is the main ingredient leading to these improvements. Now Array says there's a lot of research on African mango seeds so let's take a look at it. So they did cite a few studies and from face value they look really impressive. In one of the studies they cite they looked at a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial which is very good. So in this study participants were split into two groups and one group took 150 milligrams of African mango seed twice daily before lunch and before dinner. And then of course the placebo group just took a placebo at the same time. So the total dose of the African mango seed was 300 milligrams a day. There were a total of 120 participants in the study that were split into two groups of 60. So that's a decent sample size. However, it is important to note that 18 people did drop out of the study before it finished. And there were some reasons for this, but the main reason is that participants found they weren't losing weight fast enough or they had unwanted side effects and dropped out because of that. Based on the results after 10 weeks, we do see dramatic results. In the African mango seed group, we see a significant decrease in body weight, waist circumference, leptin levels, which makes sense because if you're losing a lot of fat, leptin is produced by fat cells. So definitely if you're losing fat, you're going to see a decrease in leptin levels. So that makes sense. And body fat percentage. In fact, by the end of the study, those who took African mango seed went from 97.9 kilograms to 85.1 kilograms. In other words, from about 215 pounds to 187 pounds, totaling a 27 pound weight loss. In comparison, the placebo group didn't lose that much weight. We also see a big change in waist circumference going from 105 centimeters to about 88 centimeters. And body fat percentage went down from 34.2% to 27.9%. So clearly after the study, there were big differences between the African mango seed and the placebo group. And we also saw improvements in LDL cholesterol as well as total cholesterol, which makes sense since they were losing so much weight and so much fat loss. They also had a decrease in C-reactive protein, which is an inflammatory marker. And they had a large decrease in circulating blood sugar levels. They also had a significant increase in adiponectin levels, which helps to increase the uptake of glucose or sugar into cells. So this makes sense that blood sugar levels went down. And it also makes sense why there was an increase in fat lipolysis or fat burning. So if we just look at this study by itself, you would think that African mango seed is this magical supplement, magical thing that leads to such dramatic results. And honestly, I really wish this was the case. Now, Array did list other studies on African mango seed, but they are pretty old and they do have some limitations. So I actually found a more recent meta-analysis that analyzed all the available studies out there to determine if African mango seed is effective and also addressing any limitations and bias with the studies. And the study that I just talked about was also included in the meta-analysis and they were able to review the study in 
much more detail to see if there were other limitations that maybe weren't as obvious to the average reader. First things first, the authors of this meta-analysis, when they looked at all the studies, found that majority of them had a high risk of bias, meaning that the study could have been influenced in a way that affects results. So when they did the analyses, they did find that some of the studies saw really promising results with taking African mango seed. But interestingly, the only study that had a low risk of bias was the one that didn't find significant improvements in weight loss. Now, the authors did acknowledge that there does seem to be something behind taking African mango seed and supporting outcomes such as weight loss and fat loss. However, they really wanted to emphasize the fact that these studies had a lot of limitations and we can't just take them at face value and believe that absolutely African mango seed is going to lead to these outcomes. And as a result, they encouraged higher quality studies to either continue to support these findings or potentially disprove them. So will taking African mango seed absolutely lead to weight loss? We just don't know at this time. Next, we have cystic leaf extract. Like we did see with African mango seed, we do see really impressive results from cystic leaf extract as well. And I also went through the research and I found the ones that they were citing on their website and I wanted to point something immediately out to you. The one study that they mention is actually a pilot study. And a pilot study is simply kind of like a pilot run on a TV show. It's just an initial study to see if it could even work. And we really need to be careful with interpreting results from pilot studies because they're not intended to prove cause and effect. They're intended to basically design a study and see if they can run and operate it for a larger clinical trial. And so when we see results from pilot studies, we just need to be really careful because they're really not intended to prove cause and effect. And they're not robust enough to give meaningful results. Of course, pilot studies can show us really interesting information and really inspire researchers to do a further study to see if their results are actually true. But again, we can't necessarily just take it at face value and believe, okay, this pilot study showed this. Well, then it absolutely is true in the real world. But they did actually cite some other studies that weren't pilot studies. So let's look at those. One of the studies they looked at found significant improvements in BMI, body weight, and waist circumference when taking cystic leaf extract for eight weeks. While this is interesting, again, there were so many limitations in the study. First of all, it was a relatively small sample size and they didn't really mention whether or not they controlled things like diet and exercise besides telling them to just write it in a journal. And while they did see an increase in serotonin levels, it's a bit of a stretch to say that just because serotonin levels went up that all of a sudden cravings are going to be cured. Other studies did find positive results with taking cystic leaf extract and African mango seed, so the one that we mentioned just before this. In particular, when cystic leaf extract and African mango seed were taken together, they did see improvements in weight loss. The issue with this study though is that it was funded by the supplement company which can lead to bias. So at this time there does seem to be some effect in taking cystic leaf extract in supporting weight loss but again the studies are so limited at this time we do need higher quality research studies to really show cause and effect and prove that it actually is effective. Does that mean the cystic leaf extract doesn't work? No. It could potentially work but we really need to be careful with over sensationalizing research especially with all of these limitations and telling the world that yes it's absolutely going to work for you. There just are so many gaps in their research that haven't been solved yet and I find it very irresponsible to jump to these big conclusions when we're really not there yet. On top of this, most studies used at least 300 milligrams to over a thousand milligrams. And when we look at arrays ingredients, we again see that it's in a proprietary blend, so it's very difficult to know the actual dose. But what we do know is for the four ingredients, we know that the total is 895 milligrams. So if we wanted to, we could assume that all the four ingredients are an equal dosage, which they're probably not. But even if we did, we would take 895 milligrams and divide it by four. So the maximum dose of each ingredient would be 223 milligrams. So this is lower than the doses used in the studies that they cite. And on top of this, cis sleep is listed as the third ingredient behind African mango seed and green tea. So likely green tea and African mango seed are in higher doses so the dose of cystic leaf is probably actually lower than this. So we can't even say that the amount of cystic leaf extract that's found in a raised metabolic burn is even high enough to even yield similar results. Next, we have grains of paradise. First, they cite a study in 19 female participants that found a decrease in visceral fat. Now, visceral fat is the bad fat that sits around our organs and can lead to different chronic diseases. They also noticed that supplementing with grains of paradise led to an increase in metabolic rate and calorie burn. So 
like all the other ingredients, I wanted to find the actual study and look at it myself. First things first, there were 19 people in the study. So when we divide that by two, so a placebo group and the treatment group that would be taking Grades of Paradise, you have nine in 10 participants. So the study is very, very small. Now from the study, they did find a small increase in energy expenditure, which is the amount of calories that we burn in a day. However, I would argue that it might be clinically meaningless, meaning that it's not gonna have a large enough effect to actually promote weight loss. Now, one thing to note is that the chart that they put on Array's website actually is incorrect if we compare it to the chart that's in the study. I don't know if they did that on purpose. They probably didn't, but it is something to point out. Now, they are right in saying that participants burned an average of 94 calories more in the group that took Grains of Paradise compared to the placebo group. However, if we look at weight loss, there wasn't significant weight loss. So this calls into question if that 97 calories really makes a difference at the end of the day. Participants also had no significant changes in their BMI and arguably not much body fat percentage either. Though one of the limitations is they didn't directly post the p-values or significance, so it's also hard to read. And that's a little bit of a red flag when you're reading studies if they don't properly report the data. I also question in this study how participants that took grains of paradise lost visceral fat, but the placebo group seemed to actually gain it. The point of a placebo group is that they stay as the control, so they shouldn't be having extra calories, they shouldn't be being more sedentary, and the placebo that they're taking shouldn't lead to any changes in their health outcomes. So I find it very odd that they gained visceral fat. This suggests to me that the participants were somehow eating more calories or not exercising enough or some type of combination in between so that they had a calorie surplus and therefore the study wasn't properly controlled. So I would be careful with citing this study on your website to support your product when there are so many limitations with it. Now the reason I even mention and go through the limitations of the study is because Array posts these on their website suggesting that they have research to support using this ingredient in their product. These studies don't support these big vast claims that they're making on their website and especially because they have so many limitations we just can't take it at face value. Okay so finally we have the last ingredient which is a probiotic known as B420. Now there does seem to be some evidence that taking B420 as well as other probiotics in terms of helping reducing body weight and fat mass but like the rest of the studies that we talked about there are a ton of limitations and the quality is very preliminary at this time. It's just at this time we don't have enough research to support taking this probiotic and weight loss. And the issue I have, and I hope you can understand why I'm going through all of this research, but it's just to simply prove that just because a company puts on their website, there are all these research studies to back it up. That doesn't mean that it's actually true. And this is why you have to look at everything with a critical lens, because if you were just to look at the website and go, oh my gosh, they posted 15 studies that support using these ingredients and you take it at face value, then you are going to be misled in a way. So by understanding limitations in the studies and actually looking at them yourself, you can be a more informed consumer and not just trust what a supplement company is telling you. So does Array metabolic burn work? The first thing I want to point out is there are no clinical trials on Array's MB1. The only studies that they report are studies on the individual ingredients, not on actual MB1 or metabolic burn itself. What really bothers me about Array's website is they just make so many definitive statements about the ingredients in their products, and yet there really isn't enough research to support them. And they're making such definitive statements despite the fact that they don't have any research studies on their product, or at least they don't report it and they've hidden it from us, which I doubt. For instance, they say that you can have a 20% decrease in body fat in as little as three months. They also say that you can have a 31% decrease in your blood sugar levels in three months. First, there is no actual proof that a raised metabolic burn will actually do this. Second, they say that their product is for everyone, including people with an already healthy body weight. But if they're already at a healthy body weight, then they don't need to be taking this product for weight loss. Also, not everyone needs to lower their blood sugar levels. If you are an individual that does not have diabetes, your body is already doing its job at regulating your blood sugar levels. So to have a 31% decrease in blood sugar levels isn't necessarily a good thing for everyone. And yes, I do understand that they're not saying that everyone's going to have a 31% decrease in blood sugar levels, but making these claims are really, really bold and there's not a lot of context around them. Also, this chart really bothers me a lot. It has a weight loss estimator based on your height as well as your weight. And just to note, I am not 5'3", this is just the automatic presetting they have. But this is completely unvalidated. This is not something that's an actual tool that healthcare professionals
professionals use to measure if something's going to lead to significant weight loss. This is just a tool that they made up. And none of the studies they cite absolutely definitively said that you're going to lose 12% body weight in as little as three months. And let alone the fact that none of these studies were actually done on a raised metabolic burn, so they can't even promise that their product will lead to this result. And if you actually look in the fine print, they say that it's really only for people that have a BMI greater than 25. Then on their website, they have a three month breakdown on what's going to happen to your body by taking a raised metabolic burn. Again, they don't have any studies, at least that they reported on a raised metabolic burn. So they're just extrapolating results from all of the individual studies on the ingredients to come up with this. On top of this, they go as far as to say that their product is better than the weight loss drugs on the market like Ozempic or other GLP-1 agonists. First of all, there are so many pros and cons with taking weight loss drugs for supporting weight loss and only your doctor, not me, not anyone else, can help make that decision for you. But at this point in time, we actually do have quite a bit of research on these weight loss drugs that have found true clinically meaningful results. So to say that your product is comparable without doing a single study on your actual product is downright incorrect and irresponsible. On top of that, if you really wanted to compare your product to the weight loss drug, what you would need to do is you would need to set a period of time. You would need a bunch of participants. You'd split them into two groups. One would be taking a raised metabolic burn and one would be taking Ozempic or another type of weight loss drug. And over time, you would compare the results. That's how you would properly do it. But they didn't do that. So this comparison is really incorrect. And honestly, I think they should remove it from their website. They also make really big, bold claims in their videos saying, for example, that a raised metabolic burn is for everyone. And this is a huge red flag. No supplement company should be saying that their product is absolutely for everyone. There is not a single supplement out there that absolutely everyone needs. For example, if the whole argument with this product is that it's effective for significant fat loss and weight loss, then this would not be suitable for somebody who doesn't need to lose weight or actually may need to gain weight. If someone doesn't have issues with blood sugar management, maybe they actually tend to have low blood sugar, then how would this product be good for them? Ultimately, when it comes to a raised metabolic burn, the biggest thing that I take issue with is just their over-promising of results and their misleading claims. I don't necessarily think all of their ingredients are bad. I do think some of the ingredients have a bit of research behind them and they could potentially be helpful for some people. It's just that the research is so limited at this time that they really do need to be careful with making such big, bold statements. And most people don't have a research background, so a lot of them will take these results and take these studies that they just randomly cite at face value, and I find that concerning. And and really, we can't say that their product even works because we don't have any studies on even metabolic burn itself, the combination of its ingredients, and the dosages that they use. There's just no research on it, so at this time I would not recommend this product. On top of that, it is $69 Canadian a month or around $50 US a month. And if you don't do the subscription, then you also have to pay for shipping, so it's going to be even more expensive. Honestly, I'd rather you spend that money on a gym membership, on a protein powder, or on nutritious food that is probably going to lead to more improvements in your results than taking this supplement would. So overall, I'm not confident enough at this time to recommend the product. And with that, I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know in the comments if there are any other products or supplements that you want me to review. And if you did enjoy this video, I would love it if you would like and subscribe. It really does help support my channel and it helps you stay part of the community and continue to learn more. And I'll see you in the next video.